Hello and welcome back and thank you for all those new people who have subscribed to the channel. It really makes a difference. So for those of you that have looked at my videos for some time, you'll know that I love detail in my photographs. And I've previously explored things like Topaz, Denoise and Sharpen and now there are new tools in Photoshop and Lightroom. But in this video we're going to take a look at how we can enhance the detail in old photographs such as old JPEGs or low-res images such as drone photographs and bring out the detail without adding all of the nasty artifacts. And we'll also look at high ISO images and how we can reduce the noise effectively on those and still retain the maximum detail. So let's dive in now and take a look at what I've got to show you. So I've put together a few photographs to use as examples in this uh, short video and the first one is uh, an original photograph I took way back in 2005 um, with a Nikon D100. At that point there was no raw capture so we only had the option of JPEG and it was a 6 megapixel camera as you can see here 3 by 2, 3000 by 2000, 6 megapixels and when you zoom into 100% it's a little bit disappointing because it's not really sharp. It was sharply focused, but the detail, the resolution of the camera just wasn't there. So how do we improve that? Well, in uh, Lightroom, there are a couple of tools. Uh, we can go up to the photo menu and use the enhance option. And of course, firstly, because that's a JPEG image, we can't use the new Lightroom denoise feature. It just doesn't operate here. But we do have the super resolution option and we can do a preview here. This is the preview of the so-called enhanced version and that's the original. All it's done is, is increase the number of pixels but has done nothing at all to sharpen the image. So that's really pretty useless. But fortunately we have other options available to us. And what we can do is we can use this photograph and I have applied a few adjustments to this original JPEG file. What we can do is edit it in uh, Topaz Gigapixel and enhance the resolution from a 6 megapixel to 24 megapixel and see what happens with that. And I'll open that up in Photoshop and we'll have a look at it. But before we jump into Photoshop I should just go through the settings in Gigapixel because there are a couple of steps here you need to be aware of. Firstly we're starting with a JPEG image and we've made some adjustments to it. So when I go to edit in Topaz Gigapixel, I need to edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. Otherwise, these adjustments won't be visible. I could directly open the JPEG, but because I've made some adjustments, I need to open it that way. And so what it will do, it will create a TIFF uh, version of the original JPEG with those adjustments visible. And now that it's going to open in Gigapixel, I'll just bring this over here and let's move this preview over to the top of the bird so we can see some of the details. Now what we're going to do with Gigapixel is we're going to double the resolution and I'm just going to allow it to decide which option to use for the model for creating the high resolution. Um, that one you can see on the left that's the original image and that's the enhanced version. That's pretty good. Um, I'll try the low resolution option as well. It's worthwhile trying a couple of these different options because the automatic settings don't always get it right. The low resolution setting I think is marginally better but let's look at the very compressed option. It was a JPEG. The very compressed option doesn't really work so well. It loses some of the detail so I think we would go with the low res option and then we would just click on apply and that will save out the file as a new TIFF at that higher resolution and then it appears back in Lightroom. Now I've opened that in Photoshop along with the original JPEG so we'll have a little bit of a look at the comparison. So here we are, this is the original JPEG, let's just double check that we've got the right resolution. Image size and if we look at the pixels in the image we can see that it's still the original 3000 by 2000 image and I've zoomed into 100% on this image and you can see that yes there's a loss of detail um, and let's have a look at what happens when I open up the enhanced version. Now this is just the base layer. I'm going to apply some other sharpening to this and this is the point of this video is to show how to sharpen 
without increasing a lot of artifacts on the image. And you can see there right away, this is only at 50% because it's doubled the resolution, but already it's already brought back a lot of information. But we can do better than that. If we go back now and use the Topaz um, Sharpen and use the Lens Blur option, you can see that it's actually brought in or brought out quite a lot more detail, sharpened it up. But what happens is you will start to get some sharpening artifacts around edges where there's quite distinct edges in tone. I'm up at 200% now. Let's just go back to 100%. And if I turn that off and on, you'll see that, yes, while it brings out a lot of extra detail, and it's quite remarkable just how much extra detail this brings out, but you start to get some sharpening artifacts. So I've duplicated that layer, and I've used what's called the Blend If options in Photoshop to reduce the effect of these halos around those dark edges. And this is the secret source involved in this technique. It's all about how we blend the image back with the base image. So how do we get to this uh, Blend If option? Let's have a look at this now. So the Blend If options are the things that make this work in Photoshop. And if you're, if you're familiar with layers in Photoshop but you're not familiar with this technique, here's how you access it. If you select the layer that I've made the adjustments to and just double click on the body of the layer, it opens up what's called the Layer Style options. And the first one that you will see is the Blending options. And what we've got is we've got ways that we can select a tonal range for how the image, which is this layer, the current layer blends with the underlying layer. Now I'll just all reset that to what it would be normally and we can just have a look here on the left. We can see here that we've got those little sharpening artifacts. And what we've got is we've got two sliders. This one will reduce the brighter tones in the image so that those are not blended with the underlying layer. And we also have another slider for the darker tones and it will reduce the number of tones in, the, in this layer that are blended with the underlying layer. And of course, when we get these uh, sharpening artifacts, what we've got is in fact lighter and darker tones along edges. And what we can do is we can just reduce these. And all you need to do is just to move this slider. Now I've previously worked out that somewhere around 200, so that the levels from 200 and above in this sharpening layer are not blended with the layer below. And you have a little triangle slider here. Now one of the other secrets with this is we need to feather the options and what we do is we hold down the Alt key while hovering on the left hand side of this little triangle. So if I hold down the Alt key I can then split this little triangle so that now I'm feathering between 176 and 200 in the tonal range so that I'm getting a bit of a transition. And the same with the underlying layer if I just want to eliminate the really darker tones and again, just hold down the Alt key, and this time the right-hand side of the triangle, just offer a little bit of blending. And you'll see now that these little lines that have appeared around these changes of tone have been softened somewhat. Let's just say OK with that layer, and I'll turn it off. That's our original layer before we've applied the sharpening layer. And if I just go back to this layer, this is the version without the blending options used, you'll see that we've got quite a strong light line here and some darker lines. And if I turn that off and turn this one on, you'll see that they've been softened somewhat. So we've allowed ourselves to add the sharpening to this layer and then minimise the effect of those sharpening halos. Now you could do this another way. You could just not use the blending options, but you would have to go around with a mask on this layer and painstakingly paint in around the edges. This way, it just takes a couple of seconds to move those sliders. You can see the result as you work and it's much more effective. And so I've used that on that layer. And in if I just zoom back to fit the screen on this layer, I've done a few other adjustments. I've brightened the image somewhat. And then to bring out the mid-tone details in this image, I've used a uh, Nick Silver Effects Pro layer using high structure. And I've used the Blend If options again and if we zoom back into 50%, we can see the effect of that. It just really boosts up some of the mid-tone contrast. You'll see that it brings out a little bit more detail 
or apparent detail, particularly in the feathers, which is what I wanted to see. And then I've done the same thing, and I've used the blend if options on that um, nick layer. I've blended that back, so I've eliminated those lighter and darker tones in this layer. And then I've also finally used a bit of a Color Effects Pro layer on this to just again boost some of that mid-tone contrast and enhance the look of the image. And finally, just giving it a little bit of a tweak with a vignette, a little bit of a color adjustment, and a further vignette, and we're, we're looking good. And all of a sudden we've taken this image that was a low-res image, and this is an area that I'm never going to get back to, so it's worthwhile spending a little bit of time to enhance the details. Now if I zoom in here on these feathers on the back of the bird, you can see just what a great job that's done in bringing out the details. And if we go back and look at our original JPEG image, you can see what a massive difference that's made. So we've been able to enhance the details and, and bring out the contrast and restore the image beautifully without enhancing all of those nasty artifacts. So let's now look at another couple of images and see how that works. So we've seen how we can restore an old low-res JPEG and create an image that's entirely usable and that would print beautifully up to A3 or A2 size even. But if you haven't got any old photographs like that, this may not be of great interest to you. So let's have a look at another couple of options. And I've been recently experimenting with a drone and taking photographs with that and then working with them. Now, of course, when you're using a drone, it's got a very, very small sensor and, of course, the image quality isn't comparable to that of a full frame or an even a, a crop um, sensor DSLR. But we can still make some beautiful photographs with this and we can enhance them. Now, here's the original JPEG that was taken out at a park in Western Sydney and it's uh, stitched together from uh, a, a panorama, wide-angle panorama. And you can see here that um, if I zoom into 100%, here's me and my, uh, my nephew playing with our controllers. We don't know where the drone is, but we can see ourselves. And how do we enhance this? The detail is there, but it's not terrific. It's a little bit smeary. So let's have a look at how that works in Photoshop. So let's go back and here's our here's our whoops no here's our drone image JPEG and if I zoom in again to a hundred percent you can see that yes there's detail there but it seems to be a little bit lost. So let's just open up our Photoshop version of this file and then we can see how that works with a little bit of these enhancements and we can go from there. And again, it's all about trying to bring out the detail without creating any of those nasty um, halos and other artifacts that you get sometimes with enhancing images. Now, if I go back and uh, turn off all the adjustment layers, here's the original file that's been uh, saved. I haven't used any increase in resolution here because the image was in fact quite... Um, quite high resolution. Let's have a look here. Because it's stitched together, it's um, 35 megapixels or thereabouts. Plenty of resolution, but the detail, here we are, let's go into 100%. The detail just isn't quite as sharp as it should be, and that's largely down to the fact that the sensor is a little bit smaller. So if we do the same thing, I've gone in and used Topaz Denoise and then added um, a bit of sharpening to it and you can see here that if I go in even to 200% which is way bigger than you'd normally look at but you can see what happens when you use these tools it certainly brings out some more detail but we've got these rather nasty sharpening artifacts but what happens then if I use that same technique but I then use the blend if options let's just open up our panel here again I've used from about 200 and up has been um, eliminated from that layer and I haven't actually changed the darker tones. In this case it didn't seem to make a lot of difference but let's have a look at what happens. There's the original, there's the enhanced one. It still looks pretty gritty at this uh, level of magnification but it certainly has brought out some more detail in the background. If we go back to 100% uh, which is a bit more realistic you'll see there that um, 
that's the image it just looks a little bit soft using that um, sharpen and denoise in the image and of course even um, shooting it with these drones and uh, at their base ISO because of the small sensor there's inherently a little bit of noise in the image so it's worthwhile um, doing some denoise and sharpening on them to make a difference and so by using the blend if option we can enhance the detail and again I've done, used the same technique a nick high structure harsh uh, to bring out the mid-tones and let's just zoom back to fit the screen now um, I've then also used a color effects pro layer and a couple of adjustments and then you can see here that I've darkened the sky somewhat and brought out some more detail but again if you're using a drone you've got a very small sensor and even though this has been stitched together and it actually does a really good job of stitching the details together although the image looks a little bit odd you know in the corners it's a little bit of distortion but again that's part of the fun of using one of these drones but when you add these details in you can really enhance um, what is there and bring out the detail by using that blend if so let's now have a quick look at a couple of images shot on high resolution but at high ISO that then causes its own series of problems. So now let's have a look at how we can sharpen an image that was taken with a higher resolution camera but at high ISO and see how we can improve the sharpening without those nasty halos. So popping back into Lightroom, this is an image I shot on a Nikon D850, a 45 megapixel camera and it has been cropped slightly or quite severely um, but it was shot at 8000 ISO so it's quite noisy and let's have a look and how, see how we can uh, remove the noise and add sharpness without degrading the image. Now because this is a raw file we can actually use um, Lightroom's denoise functionality and we can have a look at a preview here and it will show us how it will look after the denoise function. Now bearing in mind that this then saves it as a digital negative file and if I click and hold my mouse down that's the before and that's the after view and you can see it's removed quite a lot of that noise. I'll cancel out of that because I've already uh, saved this image and we'll have a look at it in Photoshop. So moving into Photoshop I've got these files open Here's my original RAW file. I've zoomed in to 100% and you can see that, yes, it was pretty noisy. Uh, there is apparent, apparently a lot of detail here. Let's see if we can fix it. And firstly, here's the digital negative file produced from using that enhance function in Lightroom. And you'll see that while it's got rid of a lot of the noise and, and brought out mm, some of the detail, but the rest of it is still looking a little bit soft. And so my next option would be to go back to the original um, and have a look and see what it looks like when I use the Topaz denoise and sharpen plugins. And bearing in mind that if you're not prepared to pay extra for a, a plugin like Topaz, um, the Lightroom one works reasonably well. It's just that it doesn't quite work as well as the other plugins. But it's improved a lot over the original uh, denoise functionality, which was quite honestly pretty poor. So here we have, uh, if I just use the denoise and sharpen functionality without using the blend if tools, you can see that while it's brought out a lot of extra detail and got rid of a lot of the noise, there are a few crunchy sort of artifacts with it. So what I would do is use that same option, but using our, our blend if tools, we can reduce the blending in the highlights and reduce a little bit in the shadows and so that we no longer have that really crunchy detail popping in but we've still managed to bring out as much detail as we can around the rest of the uh, monkey's face. Now if I go back and look at the um, the one worked on in um, Lightroom just using its denoise functionality you can see that it's quite a lot softer here whereas our um, our newer version using the Topaz plugins it's brought out a bit more detail it might be a little bit crunchy but we're looking at at 100% and you know, you're know you not going to see it like that when you print it or you view it on a screen. But having done that, let's just have a look at what else I could do with this and we'll just pop back to fill the screen with the image. And what I've done here again is I've done um, a little bit of high structure again using the Nick plugin 
and that's a Silver Effects Pro, a Pro plug-in and I've blended it to luminosity, that's why you still see the colour. And I've dropped the opacity way down to about 36%. So if we just pop back in now and look at a little bit closer at 50%, which is probably more realistic, you can see that it's just brought up some of that mid-tone contrast without degrading the image. And again, I'm using our Blend If functionality, although I haven't actually used it here. So let's just do that. Let's just bring that back down. Around 200 seems to be the magic number for the highlights. Let's just feather that a little bit and I'll do the same with the darker tones and just feather that off a little bit and you'll see here that it's still bringing out uh, that, that mid-tone contrast without affecting the sharpening in any way. And again I've used the tonal contrast just to give it a little bit more boost and using a few more minor adjustments. Let's just go back to fit the screen got rid of a few blown out highlights and added a vignette. But certainly by the time you have worked this up using those plug-in tools and using the blend if options, you can really bring out the detail without those nasty highlights. So for one last example, let's quickly pop over to Lightroom and have a look at another photograph that I took. This was again from uh, trip to Antarctica, this time in 2010. It was shot with a Nikon D300 12 megapixel camera uh, with an 80 to 400 lens uh, at 320 ISO. Not too bad, and you can see that the exposure was pretty much all exposed to the right. So it's retained detail, but I needed to crop that image. So I cropped it down and then did some processing uh, in, in Lightroom before I took it into Gigapixel because by the time I cropped it down, it was back down to about uh, 6 megapixels from that original 12. But let's have a look at them now in Photoshop and see how the enhancements work. So here's my original uh, file, uncropped, and then I cropped it and took it into um, Topaz Gigapixel and upsized it. Oh, sorry, this is before I upsized it. This is the original crop, so it's about 6 megapixels, but with the adjustments in Lightroom to bring the tonality back. And if you look at it, and we zoom into 100%, you'll see that while the photograph was sharply focused, because of that lower resolution, we've lost a bit of detail. So let's go now and have a look at how it works out once we've taken it through Gigapixel. And you'll see here, this is the Photoshop file as I finished it, and if we look at the resolution again, it's gone back to just a bit over 24 megapixels. So we've got a little bit more detail to work with. And of course, using that um, gigapixel rather than the uh, increase resolution option in uh, Lightroom, which really just doesn't do anything, um, we've brought out a lot more detail. So again, we've gone through and I've gone and used the denoise and sharpen. And let's just zoom into 100% because this one really does enhance the details beautifully. So we're looking right here now at 100% and if I look back at the original file as opened from Gigapixel, it's upsized the file but it's also added back some detail. If I go back to my raw file at 100% or in fact we'd have to go to 200% to get the equivalent view, you'll see that the details just disappeared whereas now using that gigapixel functionality, it's improved the detail somewhat. But let's just not finish there. I've added a little bit of the sharpening and using the blend if functionality again, let's just quickly open that up. You'll see that I've reduced the highlights and reduced the shadows a little bit so that we're not getting those nasty halos. And you can see instantly that it's brought out a lot more detail in the feathers around the eye and around this part of the bill, which is pretty ugly but nonetheless it was there and it's just added that little bit of enhancement so then if I again go into my favorite tool which is using the uh, Nick Silver Effects Pro blended to luminosity and just on the bird it's brought out a little bit more of that mid-tone contrast in the feathers you can see it particularly down here if I turn that off again it just helps to build up that contrast without doing any damage and again, also using the uh, Color Effects Pro, boosted the detail a little bit more. And then with some final adjustments and a vignette, 
we've now got this image that looks really sharp at 100%. And if we go back and compare it to our raw file, you can see what a massive difference it makes uh, using those tools and using that blending to sharpen the image, bring out the detail, and you've got an image that's eminently workable. If we put that back on the screen, and we can zoom in at any point and see that there's fantastic detail. So the secret here is to be able to build up the detail, add sharpening, but without those nasty halos and artifacts, you can see that this image looks lovely and clean. And this is the way to do it using the Blendive functionality. So I hope that's really been of interest to you. Uh, give me some feedback in the comments and I look forward to seeing you again soon.